Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Apples and Tiara's vlog. Sorry, I'm eating. Today is day two of a Generation Genius unit that I have started yesterday. And today is station day. So I wanted to show you guys what stations my students are gonna be working on today and kind of how I organize stations. So a few years ago at the dollar spot, they were selling these cones and I have forever used my cones as like a station place marker. And then I just use these um, covers to label where the stations are gonna be. Um, so let me finish setting up the station and then I'll walk you guys through all of them. All right, so the kids are gonna be going to four stations today. Each station is gonna take about eight minutes um, so that's going to approximately be about 60 minutes worth of station time. I'm going to take you through each station and then kind of explain how I organize stations and then what I do for the students who are not at a station at the time. So station one is where students are to build a tower using both the Legos and the wooden blocks. They're supposed to shake the cookie sheet with the wooden blocks first and write down what they observe. Then second, they're supposed to shake the cookie sheet with the Legos and write their observations. Then they're supposed to answer the question um, on their lab sheet, which is basically why did the wooden blocks fall, but the Legos didn't. And hopefully they're, they're going to say something about the fact that these pieces sort of fit together like a puzzle. They're a lot smaller and they are stuck together in some way. So the point here is for them to be able to see that like, basically just stacking bricks on top of each other to create a building isn't really gonna work. There needs to be some sort of like way to connect the building to itself so that it's harder to knock down during an earthquake. Then station three, so they're kind of out of order just because of the layout of the room. So this is just how it had to be. So they're gently to push the two graham crackers into one another and observe what happens as they collide. What happens when they separate? No peach. She's gonna be all up in the yogurt. Okay. Um, and then what happens when they separate? Write your observations down. What types of landforms do you think could be made during this process? So the point of this lab is for them to see how tectonic plates move and how when they smash together, pieces of earth either break off or they raise up. Um, and when they separate, there is a gap. So um, hopefully they will not make a huge mess with the graham crackers. Luckily I have like a ton of extra and I have like four more tubs of yogurt. So if there was to be like a problem, <laughs> we have the supplies. But there is one tray for each student because I have seven groups of four now. And uh, there should there's one tray for each student in the group. So um, that should be plenty for them to work with. And then station two is over here on my cart. I'm actually going to be kind of standing in right here in between stations three and two because these are the messiest. Um, but students are supposed to sub observe the land and the biosphere, which they already know is the living things, uh, before doing anything. They drop the small ball into the deep end of the water and make an observation of land and biosphere and write down what happens. So they can drop the ping pong ball. And what they're supposed to observe is that there are waves uh, that go toward the land. And then they're gonna drop a bigger ball. And hopefully they're gonna see that there are bigger waves. Um, I wish that I could get this a little bit deeper, but basically the essential part that they're supposed to grasp here is that a disturbance in the water or on the ocean floor is going to create a wave. Um, and you know, that's a tsunami. So we'll go with that. I might end up putting a bigger rock. I have bigger rocks. Um, so we'll see if, if they're not grasping the whole like big disturbance thing, I might find a bigger rock that I have that they can drop in there. Um, and then station four, do not ask me why I have this wig in here. <laughs> I don't even want to go there. Uh, this is just a discussion station. So they're discussing questions with their team and answering questions. What are some of the dangers about a volcanic eruption? 
What are some effects this could have on plants, animals, and people? And how can we protect these organisms from volcanic eruptions? So this is really just supposed to be a place for them to discuss some questions, write down their thoughts, and then they return to their seat. So what are the other students doing while those four groups are up at stations? Great question. So the stations are eight minute rotations each. That's about 32 minutes per like group. So because I have seven groups, I'm going to be doing two 32 minute rotations, which will be around, it's supposed to be under 70 minutes. I have a 90 minute block. Normally, I block out the whole 90 minutes for stations because one, they need enough time to get from one station to the next and have time to clean it up. So I typically will remind them around five to six minutes, hey, it's time to start resetting your station, which means putting it back in the condition you found it. Um, so that means like taking the balls out of the sand, um, putting the tree back where it goes, things like that if it gets knocked over. Um, and then the students that are not at the actual stations at the time will be working on some sort of like enrichment activity. Today, I've assigned them a boom card deck that is all about earthquakes and natural disasters. So if they're not at a station, they're sitting at their table, they're working on this boom cards assignment quietly. If they finish early, they have a whole choice board of things that they can work on from Typing Club, SC Math, Prodigy, um, Epic Reading. There's a whole ton of things that they can pick from and um, they just need to be doing it quietly at their seat until it is time for them to get up and do their rotations. After the station rotations are done, I typically will follow up with a discussion about what they found at the station or what they observed or maybe the purpose of the station, um, what they were supposed to be getting from it. Um, and then I kind of go through some of the discussion questions that Generation Genius gives. And then tomorrow we will watch the Generation Genius video, we will play the Kahoot game, and we will do an exit ticket. Now, the only thing I don't love about this Generation Genius lesson in particular is that there isn't really so the learning target or the standard is, I can generate and compare multiple solutions to reduce the impact of natural earth processes on humans. So they're not actually generating anything. Like there isn't a challenge where they build something and then we test it, which I don't love. Um, in the past, I've done that with like um, toothpicks, marshmallows on a jello tray and we put it on a shake table and we watch it shake which I do have the shake table and I do have all of the things to make jello, but tomorrow is the last day before spring break and we just ran out of time. So um, the good news though, is that throughout this unit, the kids have been like discussing so many different solutions that they think would reduce the impact on human beings. So they're not necessarily building or creating anything this time, unfortunately, but they are generating these ideas and discussing them. So it's still um, an intentional lesson. I'm still letting them have these arguments, not real arguments, you guys know what I mean, scientific arguments about these solutions and their ideas. And then through the video, they'll get to actually see some real ones, which is really awesome. So unfortunately, because of the time crunch, um, I'm not gonna be able to do that I might be able to pick it up when we come back from spring break. But to be honest with you, we have so many things happening right after spring break, like testing the week after we return from spring break, the whole week we're testing. Um, so, and my student teacher is taking over the science days. We actually have to break up our day. We've kind of decided that she is gonna take over, fully take over science um, instruction and I will be doing social studies and um, other like housekeeping stuff on the days she's not here because she's only here three days a week. So I believe she's going to be coming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday every week. And then on Thursdays and Fridays, I will teach social studies 
either that or she's gonna come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and on Mondays and Tuesdays, I would teach social studies. So we're gonna kind of split it up like that. I really want to give her the opportunity to teach social studies, but because of the schedule, it just makes more sense for her to be the sole science person. She's gonna plan science, prep science, grade science, deliver science. That way, there's no like, oh, okay, well, what did you cover yesterday? Um, she's gonna be taking over science completely. That way there's no like, um, she won't like have missed anything, if that makes sense. And then I'll just do social studies, which means there'll be two days of social studies every week, which is totally fine with me. Um, it'll be, I'll probably have more time throughout the quarter, because usually I do like six weeks on and six weeks off. Um, or I do like one week on and one week off. So this will be great because I'll have two days every week. So I think it will balance out. But, um, okay, so how do I manage stations? Well, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna flip you around. So I have this slide. Um, basically what I do is I explain the directions of each station prior to letting my students go to them. Um, I walk through it, I read the directions for them. I don't really, like, I don't fully model what they're supposed to do, but I kind of, like, show them in my own way because I don't want to ruin the materials. Um, but basically, I'll just kind of read through each one of these. And then this is kind of how I organize it. So I have an eight-minute timer, so that's per station. And then I have which table is starting where and which direction they go. So North America will start at station one and then rotate through to station four. So they'll go one, two, three, four. And then this is the station lab sheet that I give them. It is something that they will be turning in. It's called Notebook Tasks Natural Disasters. I always put the learning target on it and then a space for the date. And then there is a space for them to respond to all of the questions that are on their directions card thingies over there. And then this is kind of what we'll use for our discussion after the um, station. So we kind of discuss what they were supposed to see at each one, what their um, answers or responses were, and then that is typically the whole thing. So that is what we're doing today in fourth grade science. Again, we have spring break starting after tomorrow. Um, so we're kind of just trying to wrap things up and everything that we're doing like this week is all going toward like quarter four. Um, but this is kind of like the wrap up of our earthquake unit. We um, we had a lot of fun with it. It was a good time. It's called when it's underground. Magma? Magma. Okay, so the yogurt is magma, and then the graham crackers are tectonic plates. So when the magma is coming up in the middle like that, what do you think that forms? <laughs> well, that too, but like what kind of landform is it being built? What happens when magma comes out of the earth? Volcano. You guys all reset? Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you are interested in following me on Instagram, the link will be down in the description box below. All of my glasses frames are also um, connected to a discount code. It will be linked down below as well. I absolutely love my Zen glasses. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.